The question about us living in a computer simulation designed by a higher life form has bugged many for a very long time. Even Elon Musk suggested that the development of simulations indistinguishable from reality was inevitable. The likelihood that we are living in base reality, he concluded, was just one in billions. So, how likely is it that we're living in a computer simulation? If you're new to this channel, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss another video on this channel. Many technologists and physicists believe that simulation theory will be proved just as it was proved that the Earth was not the center of the universe. Musk is just one of the people in Silicon Valley to take a keen interest in the simulation hypothesis, which argues that what we experience as reality is actually a giant computer simulation created by a more sophisticated intelligence. And if it sounds a lot like the Matrix, that's because it is. Unpopular argument for the simulation hypothesis came from Oxford University's Nick Bostrom in 2003. In a paper titled, Are You Living in a Simulation? Bostrom suggested that members of an advanced post-human civilization with vast computing power might choose to run simulations of their ancestors in the universe. This argument is extrapolated from observing current trends in technology, including the rise of virtual reality and efforts to map the human brain. At the same time, video games are becoming more and more sophisticated, and in the future, we'll be able to have simulations of conscious entities inside them. 40 years ago, we had Pong, just two rectangles and a dot. That's where we were. Now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. And soon, we'll have virtual reality. We'll have augmented reality, said Musk. If you assume any rate of improvement at all, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. Richard J. Terrell believes that recognizing that we're probably living in a simulation is as game-changing as Copernicus realizing that the Earth was not the center of the universe. It was such a profound idea that it wasn't even thought of as an assumption, he said. Before Copernicus, scientists had tried to explain the peculiar behavior of the planet's motion with complex mathematical models. When they dropped the assumption, everything else became much simpler to understand. Everyone is so convinced by the hypothesis. In order to make the argument in the first place, we need to know what the fundamental laws of physics are where the simulations are being made. And if we are in a simulation, then we have no clue what the laws of physics are, as the physics we know would just be the simulated laws of physics. And just in case it's been weighing on your mind, you can relax now. A team of theoretical physicists from Oxford University in the UK has shown that life and reality cannot be merely simulations generated by a massive extraterrestrial computer. In a paper published in the journal Science Advances, Zohar Ringel and Dmitry Kovrizi show that constructing a computer simulation of a particular quantum phenomenon that occurs in metals is impossible, not just practically, but in principle. They discovered that the complexity of the simulation increased exponentially with the number of particles being simulated. If the complexity grew linearly with the number of particles being simulated, then doubling the number of particles would mean doubling the computing power required. If, however, the complexity grows on an exponential scale, where the amount of computing power has to double every time a single particle is added, then the task quickly becomes impossible. Researchers calculated that just storing information about a couple hundred electrons would require a computer memory that would physically require more atoms than exist in the universe. And given the physically impossible amount of computer grunt needed to store information for just one member of this subset, fears that we might be unknowingly living in some vast version of the Matrix can now be put to rest. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to our channel, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell icon. You can find me on One Minute Facts. This is Gray, signing off.